When I talk about intermolecular forces, talk about hydrogen bonding, uh, talk about dipole-dipole forces and dispersion forces, there are many different ways I try to get to the same concept. Certainly, uh, boiling point is one way. In, um, what, one thing I do like to do is get several liquids of varying composition and show the difference between the liquid itself. And the students learn things about viscosity and, and I can, and we know some structures. We've already talked about a little bit of organic chemistry and what the names of the compounds mean. So I can pull out different uh, liquids and show them the difference in the way the liquid looks. And what I have over here is a list of some of the liquids I'm going to be using. And I have varying amounts of carbon atoms. We've got three carbon atoms in a few of the molecules. We've got seven carbon atoms in some and five carbon atoms in another. Okay. We've got their boiling points in no specific order. We see that one of the boiling points is below zero. And as a teaching tip, I don't actually put propane into this flask. It's air. And if you want to use several gases to show their boiling points are below room temperature, you can use the same flask. Hey, look, now it's methane. You want ethane? There we go. This is butane after I've let it out. Okay, so now we've got several different gases without actually having that gas in the, in the flask. In my classroom, I actually have these in uh, bottles with caps on them, and they're sealed fairly well. And that way I can use them year after year. I don't have to pour them in and pour them out. Right now I have a rubber stopper in them. And on top of the rubber stopper I have paraffin. And the paraffin itself isn't sufficient because some of these will actually dissolve the paraffin. And the rubber stopper itself isn't going to be sufficient because as you'll see I'm going to be agitating them a lot. And I want to make sure they're well sealed. Uh, if you seal it in the classroom with a screw top lid, Make sure it's, it's well sealed before you use them. You might want to even put paraffin over that, parafilm. Okay, so back to the chart. If I want to compare two liquids, um, I try to pick two liquids that only have one of the different uh, things we're looking for different between them. For example, if we want to look at hydrogen bonding, we can take pentane, which is an alkane. It's a hydrocarbon. would have no hydrogen bonding because all the hydrogens are bonded to carbon. It's a nonpolar substance. And compare it with pentanol, where we see we have an OH on it, an alcohol group, and the OH is going to give us some hydrogen bonding. I teach my kids, look for the OH. That's your hydrogen bonding. So if I take my pentane and my pentanol, pentane is a liquid at room temperature. Okay, that's my pentane. Isn't it lovely? And then I take my pentanol, and I say, now look at the difference. Okay, this isn't very exciting. But I'll do a couple of things. If I've got my alcohol on your left and my hydrocarbon on your right, I want to see what the difference is between them. And I ask the students, which of these should have stronger intermolecular forces? And hopefully at this point in time, they're looking at the alcohol with its hydrogen bonding. So I've got two things I do with this. One is the swirl test. As much as I can, being right-handed, I try to swirl them equally. And then just let them sit. And it's pretty obvious that the pentanol settles down much more quickly than the pentane because the pentanol, having stronger intermolecular forces, the hydrogen bonding, is going to want to stick together better or have a higher viscosity and settle down more quickly than the pentane. The other thing I can do is shake them up quite vigorously and watch the bubble formation. Okay, this works a little bit better with a couple of the other compounds. But you can see the bubbles just uh, don't form too well in the pentanol because that means they have to break through those intermolecular forces. Okay. Um, I can also compare two compounds that have only dispersion forces, but have a different number of carbon atoms. For example, the heptane, which is a hydrocarbon with seven carbons, 
and the pentane, which is a hydrocarbon with five carbons. Now we've seen the pentane. Five carbons will be on your left. And we can take the seven carbons on the right and see if that makes a difference. Dispersion forces only. The difference is the number of carbon atoms. So if I pick them up and I swirl them, again, the seven carbon settles down much more quickly than does the five carbon. Now why would that happen? There's no hydrogen bonding. There's no dipole. So we get to the point where more carbons means more dispersion forces. I like to use the analogy of Velcro. Velcro is actually a fairly weak attractive force with the hook in the eye. One little Velcro hook and eye isn't going to hold your clothes together very well. But the more of them we have, the stronger the total attraction. Seven carbons, although each one has a very weak dispersion force, is going to give us a stronger total attraction than the five carbon atoms. And of course, if we get even longer chains, it'll be better. And my favorite group to show is, is a trio, actually. What I have here are my three carbon chains. Um, and we can take this one away. And they're all alcohols. I have three carbon alcohols in uh, different, with different numbers of alcohols on them. We have our isopropyl alcohol, which has one alcohol group on it. We've got our propylene glycol, also called propane diol which uh, if you're going to order it, you need to know that. Our propylene glycol uh, antifreeze has two OH groups on it, and our glycerol has three. So what do they have? Well, they have the same length chain, so relatively speaking, the same number of dispersion forces, and they all have OH groups on them. Great, hydrogen bonding. They should all be equal. And if you ask the right questions and got the right students in your class, Somebody's going to come up with the concept of, well, wouldn't two alcohol groups be stronger attraction than one? And wouldn't three be the strongest of them all? And that's what we're trying to get to here. We've got them one alcohol, two alcohols, three alcohols. So it's difficult to show all three at a time, but that's not going to matter too much. I can show the propanol with one alcohol and the propane diol with two alcohols. And you can see the propane diol settles down much more quickly and the bubbles get trapped in there because it's difficult to break through those hydrogen bonds to get out. Now the most dramatic one is my glycerin with three alcohol groups. How easy is it going to be for me to break those molecules apart for each other in order to swirl them? Look at it go. Uh. It's just not swirling at all. It's very thick, as the kids like to say. Mrs. Butterworth would like this one a lot because it's very viscous. I'm sorry, it should be done here. Sticks to the, to the flask very well, flows very slowly, and those bubbles don't come out very easily because once they're in there, in order to come back out, they have to break through all those hydrogen bonds. So these three, to me, show the difference in uh, how many hydrogen bonds we have and how many alcohol groups we have. You can do this with as many liquids as you want or as few as you want. Um, for some of them, you can use water if you want. If you don't have heptanol, um, certainly welcome to do that. Um, another thing you have to be careful, I did prepare these yesterday. I had 100 milliliters in each and uh, if we look, where's the pentane? If we look at the pentane, we look at the graduations on the flask there, um, I'm below 100 milliliters. Now it's sealed, but we're still going to have evaporation. So be careful with that as well. If you want them to be equal, you're going to have to remember that uh, we're still going to have some evaporation. The pentane's going to evaporate more easily than some of the others because it has, of the ones I've used, it has the weakest intermolecular forces. So if you leave them too long, you may end up with very little liquid in them. Might have to refill it a little bit. Okay. So I find this a good way to show students another way uh, to tell the difference between intermolecular forces. 
Um, we talk about the viscosity. The swirling shows the viscosity very well. We could talk about the difference between different amounts of hydrogen bonding and different amounts of carbon atoms, even with dispersion forces. So I like this one a lot. Thank you. <laughs>